All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the 31st episode of The Get Down. My name is Cream. Gary W. here. It's been a while, but we're back for our first, I feel like you and me, <laughs> episode in a while, right? Well, hilariously, not only just me and, just a me and you episode, but I feel like I haven't spoke to you <laughs> just individually. So you guys are going to hear a conversation, I, for maybe that <laughs> something that we would usually have yeah. On our morning call that we haven't had in two weeks anyway. So yeah, a little glimpse behind the scenes of our like processes and organizational stuff that we always talk about. Yeah. Now we're just going to record it and put it out there for everybody and just like, you know, show everybody the, 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 the growing pains of, of a business and especially one where we're constantly, which we're going to get into transitioning, but going through a huge transition now with me working pretty much a full-time job as, as we say. Yeah. We'll get into that. I, th well, I think what, what we want to start a little bit about some videos and stuff we've seen coming out of Miami and Mexico and, and just like and bring up the question, is nightlife on the road to recovery? You know what? When I look at the videos coming out of Miami, I think it's really funny that all the people that, not all the people, a lot of people that we've worked with in Jersey over the years, I see now have either relocated or they got away for the winter and they're snowbirding it down here in their twenties and thirties. Um, and I see these videos coming out of like nightclubs and it looks regular. And like, I had the question throughout quarantine was there going to be hesitation with jumping back into that kind of environment. It's not the most sterile environment anyway. You know what I mean? Like even in normal times, uh, you know, you, you turn the lights on in a nightclub and it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> I don't care how nice, nice, quote unquote, the nightclub looks, you know, when the lights are down. So not the most sterile environment, not the cleanest place to be in. And people are just in there heavy, like, you know, normal. And that's OK. And I'm, I'm all I'm all on board because we got to kind of transition back at some point. Um, and I think the more people get used to seeing those kind of videos and those kind of images, it's not going to be a shocking. Right. And then it's going to make it the process a little easier to transition back into quote unquote regular times. Yeah. I, I think from a, from a society standpoint, I see the videos and I cringe a little bit like, wow, this is definitely not what we should be doing. But from a DJ perspective, like I'll take it all day and a personal perspective, like, I don't know. I, I've, I think a lot of us have uh, where we were very wary to begin with the, the veil of, of concern and caution has kind of come down. I think people have hit that wall of being sick and tired of dealing with this, this virus and being stuck and not having gigs and nightlife. And you can't sit at the bar even like, it just sucks. People are more, over it. The more we see it, the less shocking it becomes like everything else in society and in life. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the more it's in our Instagram feed, the more it's on our TikTok or wherever it is, you know, the less you're like, oh my God, what is that person doing? Or what are they doing? Like somebody, here's, here's a really bad one. <laughs> Just a little out, out, out of context here. But a bunch of guys pulled up at the golf course yesterday and some dude like left bourbon and another group pulled up and they had like Miller lights and like, oh, we'll trade you Miller lights with bourbon. And now these two groups of strangers are, passing around sipping out of the same whiskey bottle <laughs> probably like, not the probably not the best idea these days i'm like you know is this is what it's gotten to we just really like just threw it right out the window <laughs> yeah but anyway i think there's two things to really take away from this number one is that as you as you said earlier i think as things start to get more open and and more nightlife is coming back the hesitation of patrons I don't think it's going to be there. I think people are just going to want to be out no matter what. And I think part of the realization is just the fact that the virus is going to be here. It's not going anywhere. A vaccine's not going to instantly fix the situation. And we have to figure out ways to somewhat get back to a normal scene dealing with the virus. So I don't know. I, I think it's been, it's been interesting because in the last two weeks, we've been hit up by a lot of venues and promoters and people looking to partner with us coming out of football season for, for gigs, which surprised the shit out of me, to be honest. 
it's it's shocking because I don't feel like up there is anywhere near back to any kind of normal. Nor do do you think capacity is going to come up soon to where you, you the, there is a comfort in hiring entertainment, or do you think that going through the same motions at these restaurants that used to have and these lounges that used to have DJs, you think they're ready to start getting back into some kind of normalcy? I think venues are starting to think similar, similarly to us in the fact that, all right, it's now February, it's almost March, and then April hits and it's going to start warming up. Things are going to get a little better. Let's put a plan in place to start having entertainment again and hopefully start luring out more customers when they have the outdoor open again because that instantly like doubles capacity for everybody. Well, you, you also have all of those – like. You have St. Patty's Day coming up in March, which you know we've had St. Patty's Days in Morristown and in Hoboken that have been warm. So you might not be that far outside of getting one of those tricky warm days up there. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's going to be enough time for met, like towns to be like, hey, we, we could do this. You know, I think they're no, going to try but, to stop it. No, but what, I, what I'm saying is that like start to have patrons get used to entertainment and get used to having people in the door and then be like okay like we we can have a smaller version of you know you, you can just have like a saturday afternoon thing like you know what i mean and not right. this big blowout i think it's it's getting people warmed up to the idea of it not hey let's smack them in the face with this big party thing in march like right 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 you know and, and kind of get the ball rolling now just so it's not a like we said before too, like a shock. Yeah. I think there's a few things that can happen. I mean, I think allowing people to sit at the bar again is going to be a, a, a small first step. And then the minute we go up over 25%, I think we're going to see a lot more bookings come through because most of the venues have straight up said to me, Hey, like as soon as we hit 50%, like it's go time. And I think also pushing the the end time back to you know a two a two a.m. or even a midnight would also help with that. For sure, there's a finite reason for that because the twenty five percent they have no margins. There's no margins on food. There's no margin on anything. They're just yeah. breaking even at that point. Um, once you push it over that, then you you're messing with a little bit of profit, not a lot, but where your profit lies is the liquor. And because of that, you're going to want entertainment to keep people around drinking. Right. So, and, th and that's, that's where that comes in. Yeah. I think the other thing too, is, you know, all of us, all of our, our, our friends or who people who usually come out to see us are itching to come out. So, you know, I think it's a lot easier for us as DJs to, be able to fill a table that spends enough money that covers the cost of you DJ kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Well, we're at an age where people are established. I, I think like having a bunch of 21, like if you're 21, 22 and having to fill out like a 400, $500 minimum, though I have definitely stupidly spent that on a bottle at 21, 22 years old, but like to do that regularly would be very difficult. Yeah, I agree. But like if if you get a, a three or four or five friends to go out and you're at a, a six, a six top, let's say. Right. Like you're spending 50 bucks each. You're probably going to yeah. get something to eat. You're going to get a bunch of drinks and maybe a round of shots or two. And like it, they're not discounting. They're not giving you the industry discount at this right. point. You're paying full price because I've paid full price at venues that I work at. <laughs> Man, so not used to that. That's a That's a whole. But like I said, the margins are tight. Yeah. Like, I get it. It sucks. I'm like, wow, this is what it feels like to be a regular person. <laughs> that, that industry. I'm like, guys, you know that I, I DJ here, right? Like, I'm, I'm supporting you guys on a night that I'm not working. You're going to hit me with a full price? Oh, uh, that's too good. But it's, it's so true. I was thinking about it the other day. Like, wow, just ha always having, especially be, now living outside of the market, I don't have any of that. So, like, you go everywhere and pay full price. So, it's so strange. So yeah. strange, such a foreign thing. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll eventually we're we're gonna get there. I think it's coming sooner than later. Like you said, we've been hit up by people, and I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to travel back there when it's not two feet of snow on the ground. Because... Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll be <laughs> we'll be back to literally being able to book a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for whoever if we wanted to. You know, like yeah, 
I, I think we haven't really announced anywhere that we're anybody that we're partnering with for uh, post football, but we will pretty soon. Um, you know, our Friday 80 river party, our Saturday uh, Ashford party is back. So Sunday, we might have a couple, a couple spots. So we'll, we'll announce that stuff, but listen, it's, next, it's definitely nice. I'm thinking, listen, next week, I think we'll announce it next week on the podcast because it'll be either the week after that, that like that Sunday following yeah. or so guys be on the lookout for that for sure. Um, so something I want to kind of transition into and talk about because it's something that we're going through now and have been going through for the last 12 months is knowing when to adopt new processes and practices and when you're doing so how to do it effectively. So you don't have gray, you don't deal with gray area because when you deal with gray area, you, you're things can get messy, right? You, you know, you have to be very well balanced when you're going to adopt a new process or practice, no matter what it is. You know, I think one of the things that we had dealt with was scheduling like a year and a half ago with the one I work app that we use. Yep. Um, and it got messy there for a little bit. Um, so because we, in GDU Bytes, you talked about five apps to make you more organized. So this, this kind of brought this, this question on for me. So I don't know if you want to touch on any of this. Yeah, I think, so I, I think you, the individual DJ, it's a lot easier to bring in a practice or adopt a new app or, you know, a new program, whatever it is, because essentially you just have to make it a habit, right? It, it, you have to build it into your, your workflow and, and how you're going to accomplish certain things and just do it every day. And then it'll become like second nature and you've adopted a new practice and it's not that much work for us. It's a little different because we need our, the people that work with us and the DJs that are working with us, like they have to adopt it also. So when you're dealing with 20 DJs, right. Adopting a scheduling app, there was definitely some growing pains or you're dealing with, you know, five of us working on a team, um, to use like a back end um, workflow app or a back end, uh, uh, place where we're going to talk about projects, it, it, took, it takes a little time. You know, it's not one person. Yeah, our Monday.com, like we've had hanging around for 10 months, I think, probably. Yeah. And I feel like it really has become habit within the last three. But we are notorious for getting everybody to get flowing, you know, at the same time. It, it, it's hard. You're right. It's, it's difficult when there's more than one person. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you like have a, if you're an individual DJ, you have like a full time job and then you're DJing three, four times a week. I can see where it can become a little difficult to like get used to certain things because you just don't have a lot of time. You know, yeah. like we always say, you're doing so many things, whether it be graphic design or promotion, whatever you're doing in your personal life. And then also your full time job, it, it, it can be difficult. But you really something that you taught me that you really need to be open to learning new apps and new things to, to adopt, to make your life. Because honestly, at first, it's going to make your life harder because you need to get used to it. Yeah, it sucks at first. <laughs> it, it's horrible. It's horrible. But it's and always then you worth realize, the pain. Then you realize like three weeks in, you're like, wow, what, what was my life like prior to this? You right. Know? Everything was so much harder. Um, like I was stuck on Photoshop forever. And you're like, just I'm doing everything on Canva now. And it's I'm like, I'm easier. stuck on Stuck on Photoshop and I'm like in Canva the other night and I'm like, what am I doing? Like I'm never <laughs> opening Photoshop again. Yeah. But you, and the older you get, the harder it does become to adopt new things, but you Definitely. really, you really have to be open-minded and realize that people didn't make these apps or, or these programs to make your life harder. Right. Like th they were literally made to make your life easier. So just be open-minded to it and, and, and adopt some of those things. I mean, some of the things that we've done, right, for, for Get Down, Switch was tough for us for a while. That's one that we kind of just, we got to do. We got to do it. Didn't happen. Got to do it, you know? And now it's just kind of like one of those things. It's just, you know, it's 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 flowing and, and people jump on there. Like I said, Monday.com, this podcast was, is another thing that, that that was new that that's hard to, sometimes it's hard to schedule right now, but, it, you know, it's got to get done. 
Zoom meetings, everybody has to deal with that. Um, like Loom, like Canva, like I said, QuickBooks, like all, like all of these things, so many things that we've had to do over the last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, but every single one of those things like has made life easier. Yeah, I, I, I would say, so what we're talking about, I, I shot a video for um, Get Down University Bites. You can find that on our YouTube if you just search Get Down DJs on YouTube or in the show notes. But we've been putting out a video every week, basically talking about one topic, a, a, a coaching video. And this week we talked about some of the apps that we use that we've adopted over the last 12 months that have really, really helped our business. So if you want to learn more about the five apps we talk about, you can go check out that video. Um, but I, I think the big thing is if you are trying to adopt one of these, there's a couple things that can really help you. So number one, I would say is only try to adopt one of these at a time. Um, it's like creating a new habit. It's, it's like anything else, right? Going to the gym. Like you can't work on seven things, going to the gym and yoga and meditation and eating healthy all at the same time. Like Try to work one into your daily routine, make it a habit, and then move on to the next one. And I think that goes the same here when you're trying to work on, on one of these programs or apps. Um, the second thing I would say is open up a, a Google Doc or whatever note-taking software you use and create a process and a workflow, right? So for me, for example, shooting the Get Down University videos, I came up with a process. Like first, I write the script. Or first I come up with the idea, then I write the script, then I shoot the video, then I edit the video, then we do this. And like, once you write it out and see exactly what needs to be done, it makes it a lot easier and more manageable because now you have a process every time you do something, right? And it's like, step number five is now go into my editing software, which is X. Step six is go into my caption generating software, which is seven, you know, like whatever it is. I think that makes life a lot easier and more clear. And it just feels a little more manageable. Right. Cause you're not overwhelmed. You have a clear path to, to what that the end goal is. You know, if, if you keep all that stuff kind of like jumbled up in your head and you're trying to, I know I'm, I'm the type of person that would go to like from one to five to three to six, you know, because that's just how my mind works. So you're right. Like having it written out and having a process and then, after a while, it'll become second nature. You're right. not even gonna have to look at that list. But yes, keep making it less overwhelming for yourself. It always makes anything that you do a lot easier, right? So, yeah, and I think for for us, it it, it was honestly the biggest thing we did. I mean, besides get down university, but I think for our business and and just us working better, adopting all these apps and processes was really the most beneficial and greatest thing we've, we accomplished in 2020 because yes, it sucked. And yes, we had some stuff that we tried and didn't use, but I just think everything works much more fluidly now, you know? For sure. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, like, especially we're, we talk about money.com a lot because it's something that we're using every day. It's, it's very top of mind, right? right in front of our face constant's literally right in front of my face right now and well like now that i have a, a quote unquote full time job like yeah i can go on here and just see okay this this and this i don't even really have to talk to you every single day right because it's there and you get an email and you get a text notification you get all this stuff right we're talking through monday essentially by just keeping it up to date and you know just writing a little notes and letting each other know when things get accomplished yeah. So that's, that's not something that if you work by yourself that you're, I mean, you know what, actually our, our interns are using this for their own schedules uh, just so that they are getting those notifications to say, Hey, this is due today or this is due tomorrow. You can kind of set it up, right. However you want, like you could be known, uh, you can be notified like three days prior, like this is due on Sunday or something like that. Yeah, I, I didn't really think we were going to like dive deep into anything that we we get into, but I think Monday.com is worth talking about a little bit. For and, sure. and just explaining what it is. So so basically, it's a, a task management and workflow website. And what that means is I go in and I put all the things that I want to accomplish for each month, right? So right before February started, I sat down. I just wrote out some goals for the month of February, the things that I wanted to accomplish, right? So um, 
you know, my Spotify playlist, uh, a cream mix that I want to finish, shooting the Get Down University videos, uh, my TikTok and real strategy and schedule that I'm going to work on this month. And then underneath that, I would create a, a, like a block of tasks for each one of those things. And the nice thing is that you can put a date attached to each one of those things. So for example, um, let me go into, what am I working on today? So I'm working on creating animated uh, videos for my edits for social media today, right? And it has, you know, today I'm working on creating four edit videos with sample sound for 30 seconds and it's due today. And I have the four songs listed and I know what I'm working on, you know, like if you build this out ahead of time, you know exactly what you need to get done. The dates are all associated with it and you're getting emails every day and every week letting you know what's due. A huge part of working for yourself is staying on task because it's really easy to get distracted and to go do, you know, other things, especially if it's not written out right in front of your face, like, Hey, get this done today. And this program in particular keeps you accountable, you know? And I think that's, that's the huge, that's the huge part of it. Right. And, and planning is something we've been talking about so much for the last three or four months. And it's like, this is just a way to implement your plan and stay on, on task. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's really become a, the backbone, I think, to what, what our business, how our business is, is staying on task da daily. And that's, that's it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it was worth bringing this up. And if you guys don't use like, even just like reminders on your, on your computer or your phone, like just something that lets you or reminds you of what you're, you need to accomplish for the day in the week. Like, I think that's the simplest form and, and something you should be doing if you're not already. Yeah. I'm still a little married to like my, just the, the simple calendar on my phone. You know, that's just like a second reminder, as, yes. you know, just in case I don't pick up my emails for whatever reason for six, seven, eight hours, which does happen these days. Um, like at least I have that coming through every, you know, every couple hours or so. So, but, um, Something else, I, I'm going to transition out, out of this because uh, I, I don't want to bore anybody with, you know, the back end business shit too, too much. Um, something that I've been struggling with this week that I meant to talk to you about is just the state of music for DJs. I know we've talked about this a little bit, um, but for DJs in particular, you know, and I'm not talking about remixes or bootlegs. I'm talking about like regular music, like, and then like, cause you have to grab regular music to, to draw inspiration for your remixes and bootlegs. Right. So I don't know, like what's going on in the pop world. Like, is there, is there good stuff coming out? Like I've been kind of out of the loop. I, I, like I've said several, a couple times in a couple different episodes, but like I've been out of the loop kind of within hip hop and within like actual pop music because I'm not, listening to that regularly anyway um like what's been going on recently for like this year 2021 like anything like has it just been like static like not much going on <laughs> um yeah i mean i don't know does the dua lipa stuff count i don't really know yeah. when that came out it does i i feel like i haven't looked at and this is this is bad practice i feel like i haven't looked at like a billboard because i used to look at billboard charts um, every week when I was DJing just to see if something like hit in the last week, just so I can either look at it for a sample to suggest to you, uh, for a bootleg or be like, you know, what is this wasn't on my radar last week? What is this kind of a thing? And I've kind of fallen out of that practice. And I feel like it's something that I should get back into, especially for the fact that we think that nightlife is going to be coming back soon. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I used to do the billboard thing too. The only th reason I use billboard is to go make music really because okay, I, I just feel like they're so far behind on like the weekend blinding lights is number three on the hot 
100 for Billboard. Like that song came out last summer, I feel like. I was going to say it's got to be up there for like 40 weeks, right? 60 weeks it's on the chart. Yeah, see, I mean. (laughs) So So I feel like that answers my question. I feel like then pop music really hasn't gone anywhere in the last 12 months. I just, I think people are a little more reluctant to put out music, but I, I also think that you use your, your record pools for that. You know, like I don't need to go yeah. to billboard because if you're downloading regularly, the pop music is going to come through there. And if you have a good ear and if you're a good DJ, you do, you're right. going to pinpoint the songs that you think are going to be good and you're going to play them and remix them and whatever. See my, a, another reason why I asked this, cause I, I was listening to a radio station the other day and it was like listening to, I listened to like three or four songs and I looked when they came out and they were all like March, April, May of last year. I'm like, okay, these songs are good, but I feel like we haven't had this like rush of new music. Like we should, um, but like, I feel like the fall was always a decent time for music to come out. Winter's usually a little, I feel like it's a little, a little lull and then spring you'll get another pop. But I think part of it is deep, like, Artists aren't making money off making music. They're making money off of tours, touring, off of DJ right. tours, off of like others or, or shows. And like, so if they're you gonna can't, bang, they're you gonna can't tour tracks. and do shows. It's like, what's the point of putting out music? Because if you have a hit, why not just sit on it and wait till people can actually go out and you could make money off of that hit? I mean, wow, I, so- obviously it's a lot easier to say you have a hit than it actually be one, but right. I but- don't know. But you're right, though. Why not sit on the record and see what happens? Like, if you're an established artist, you can do that. Yeah. Um, if you're an up and coming artist, you got to just be putting stuff out as much as you can at this point. But no, you're right on that. Absolutely. So you think you think from the bigger pop stars, we'll see a little bit of a flood of. Well, hopefully, we see like a flood of of hits come through when things are getting back to normal. Hopefully. Yeah, I would hope so. I, I'm also not the best person to ask this question because I've had the mindset at every one of my gigs for the last year of, I don't really give a shit what you guys want to hear. I'm playing what I want to play. <laughs> well, if nobody could dance and everybody's sitting down, I understand that perspective. So I literally, I can count on on one hand how many sets I've like really played new hip hop. Um. According to Angelo the Kid, there's not much new hip hop out, and that's my that, that's who I go to. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The only like Ariana Grande does that count as hip hop? Uh, mm, that's pop. I guess like Megan The Stallion's been putting out a bunch of stuff that that's been pretty popular. Mm. Tyga, I don't know. See, like who? Like T C J just put out a new song. The dude who, who right. made Hoopty, right? Uh, Jack Harlow, maybe. I don't know. Those are like the only people. And at no point am I sitting in my car or in my place listening to any of that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was just wondering from the perspective, like, like I said, just have, I've been downloading house music. I think house Exclu- music is crushing it right now. I think it's, it's, the, it's the best state house music's been in, in since the EDM boom is, is how yeah. I look at it. I think this boom was coming. I think it was pushed over the edge by what's been going on because you literally can make it anywhere you can you know i could take my computer up the block and you know sit outside and make a track like it's not it can be made anywhere and these guys are just pumping tracks out like they're not sitting on tracks they're just because they're doing this some of them for the love of it and then others obviously to to make money but like these guys are making this music no matter what. Like it's it's getting pumped out constantly. Right. And it could be several tracks a day. So you're gonna see a lot of tracks are gonna see the light of day. And they yeah. have. Man, you think Joel Corey is like kicking himself, wishing that things were open <laughs> to capitalize on his success in the last year? Man, that's somebody had asked that on a meeting last week. Like, do you think all of this stuff? all of the music that came out over quarantine, if that's going to go off in the club once we're, we're back. Um, And I don't know, like, I I guess, I guess it'll be just like normal. Like those, those tracks will get pushed to 1130 and all the, all the, you know, so it'll be, it's not like the stuff go, like, it's not like the big tracks go away over a one year 
period. Like it, ju- it just gets moved around in your set. So I think the other thing too, is the big tracks that are coming out aren't necessarily like they don't have to be played peak hour because it, it's more, more deeper bass house tech house and just like piano style UK house, you know, like, yeah, that's the stuff that's, that's being made. That's really popular that I can play like a Diplo on my mind early in the night. And it's just as effective as if I played it at midnight, you know? Yeah. Especially right now, it doesn't matter. I think that transition back to um, programming a set is what's going to be really most difficult for DJs that have been DJing for people sitting down, having to go back to that mindset of, okay, well, I can't just slam records wherever the hell I want here. Yeah, I think some of the places you still have your open and peak hours where, you know, people try to push the limit and are dancing at their table and standing up a little bit and you get some hands up records going and you see the energy shift. So I think there still is that that different sections of the night and and programming your music in that way still works. Well, that's the that's the benefit of having someone at your venue night after night currently. Because they they start to know those ebbs and flows, especially because it is hard for a new person to walk in and try to figure out where to play certain records when everybody's sitting at a table. Like, you know, if I went to go DJ somewhere in Jersey right now, I wouldn't know when, like, I kind of wouldn't know where the night peaks out because it's such weird time, like six to 10, right? It peaks out at 9 PM. Like, (laughs) like people are just ready to rock. And then you're telling you're you're getting on the mic and be like, all right, guys, get out of here. See you later. Jeez. Yeah. I literally apologize on the mic at the end of every (laughs) set. Like guys, I don't want to go home either, but sorry. (laughs) Like you got to go. Oh man. All right. Interesting. Cause things just get going and there's like, all right, st- time to close. Yeah. Because especially let's say on a Friday, people work till a certain time and you can only get out by a certain time. Yeah. God knows how long it takes some girls to get ready. So like, you know, yeah, like the Friday, sets, by eight o'clock. the Friday sets, the eight to 10 is really all you got, you know, six to 10, you're kind of just playing background music. Cause the place yeah. is, is a little slower generally. Yeah, it's treated more like happy hour, six to eight, maybe. Right, and then eight p.m. It's like the rush of all the reservations come in. Seven thirty. Wow. Well, hopefully capacity gets notched up, and and it's, you know, something that could be in the past. Yeah. But yeah. All right. I mean, I think this is a good point to wrap up. I think, like, I don't know. We 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 are shooting this or recording this in the morning. Um, Kind of like we had a previous episode, I think we called morning coffee or morning. I don't remember what it was, but I think we're going to just kind of keep some of these where every once in a while, we're going to do a short little morning pod. Yeah. And just keep calling it morning coffee. (laughs) I like having these just random, random conversations. And I hope, you know, obviously people enjoy them as well. Take something out of them. You know, we'll be back to our uh, guest next week. You want to uh, Tell the folks who we got next week. Yeah, next week we have my boy Gavin Boss. He is originally from Jersey. Um, he started a similar DJ company to Get Down. Um, they're doing more private events, but out in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. Um, and he also lives between Minneapolis and I think LA, either LA or San Diego. But really smart dude. Um, he actually put together a tour this summer during the peak of the pandemic doing shows that that had DJs, artists, uh, comedians, like all kinds of really cool stuff and doing it at drive-in theaters that was really, really successful. And I think that was out of the box, forward thinking. Um, he was ahead of really anybody else. So I think, you know, he's a really smart guy and I think he's going to bring a ton of insight uh, to the conversation. Yeah. Can't wait to hear what he, uh, what he has to say and, and hear his story and all that good stuff. So looking forward to it. Yeah, man, we had him out. He played tally ho with me. Uh, <laughs> I think last year it was pretty, pretty good oh, nice. time. So, all right. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. Uh, and we'll talk to you next week. My name's Kareem. Gary W. See you guys later. Peace. Peace.